the bloody disgusting podcast network. We gonna carry on and plan the sequel, cause let's face it, baby, these days, you gotta have a sequel. Ah! Welcome back to Micro Queers. It's your weekly queer short horror roundup. Nope. Yep. (laughs) One of those things. (laughs) It's your weekly queer horror short roundup. And I'm Joe. And I'm Trace. And I'm a 21 year old baby. I don't even think that's how it goes. But I tried (laughs) to listen to it before we recorded this. (laughs) You know what? I thought of you when I watched this short because it's adorable. Yeah, that's a word for it. Um, you had cute. <laughs> you had cute. Yes, and we're talking. Um, it, it's a queer horror short called Imitations, directed by Milos Mitrovic and Fabian Velasco. I hope I didn't butcher that. Uh, you, yeah, you had cued me. Not saying, oh, it's a bizarre thing. You were just kind of like, enjoy this one. That was like kind of one of those like, oh, it's gonna be weird. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird little movie, but I think it is doing really fun critiques of two different things yes yeah it feels appropriately meta commentary which is you know unofficially one of the reasons why i thought it might be a good match to go with what we're talking about on the main feed but (laughs) overall i just like how quirky and weird this film is and in case people have not seen imitations i'll give you a very brief rundown here is the description Mm -hmm. Austin Kelsey is the most popular singer in the world. His new hit single, 21-Year-Old Baby, has the world in a frenzy as the diaper-wearing, baby-loving teen pop star rides his wave of success up the music charts. After getting plastic surgery to look more like the famous pop star, an introverted superfan named Arnold decides to go on a night on the town to celebrate his new Austin Kelsey-like face. Very quickly, things become strange for Arnold as he notices his plastic surgery has gone awry. Arnold's face slowly begins to fall apart in front of his eyes as he struggles to enjoy his celebratory karaoke night, and his dream imitation becomes a nightmare with consequences that prove to be dire. And the consequences are that his face goes away. (laughs) (laughs) Which is actually cued in advance because the gentleman who's running the store where he buys the mask actually has a book of just a bunch of blank faces. Oh, I didn't catch that. And we we are to believe that both Austin and Arnold are gay men, right? I read them that way. I mean, Austin, Kelsey... So the, the short actually opens with a fake music video for this single. And I won't lie... You hit it on the nail, I think, which is that it's trying to do two things. I would argue it's actually doing both of those things very well. One of them is this satire of just the absolute ridiculousness of which we kind of fall for pop fads. And I say that as somebody who really likes pop music, but like this is a very critical deconstruction where you're like, oh, yes, you're saying that people would fall over themselves in love with this terrible pop music. <laughs> I, I, w- I mean, I don't even limit it to pop. I limit it to just stupid fame. Is I mean, that's how I'm going to call it. There's probably a better word for it. But even things like Real Housewives or um, like influencers, I mean, I'm going to say Paris Hilton, even though I really do like and respect Paris Hilton. But it's like kind of that thing where people just do like nothing and become famous anyway. I mean, it's what Jill Roberts wanted, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't mean that these people are terrible or vacuous. It means that they've been able to capitalize and brand themselves in a certain way. I would actually argue society is more to blame. Like if we don't like these things, then we should stop rewarding it by purchasing things or watching it. So it's, I, I find it a little bit dispiriting when people say, oh, well, I just think people who watch things like The Real Housewives, or I think Paris Hilton is stupid, and I wanted to see her die in House of Wax. Mm-hmm. And I say to these people, well, you're also that person who lined up for the ticket because it was sold to you that way. Like you're basically feeding the frenzy. But that's also, I mean, it's the same kind of thing with like clickbait, you know, where someone's like, oh, yeah. oh my God, this article is so stupid. And they share the article. And I say that as someone yeah. who has done that done very that. thing. Of course. But it's also inviting people to click it, which thereby like 
says, oh, cool, let's keep doing things like this because it will get clicks and thus make us money. Yes. The other critique that I'm getting from this, though, is one on fandom in general. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you went this way, but maybe just because I viewed uh, Arnold as a gay man, I actually viewed it more as a specific critique of gay or queer fandom too oh interesting okay elaborate on that for me well just because so okay and i am this is gonna sound like a generalization so i may come across like an asshole saying this and if i do i really apologize but i'll let you know yeah we we really do like fandom suck i mean uh, there there was a lot of (laughs) (laughs) blanket statement fandom suck there's a lot of good to come out of fandoms i think there's a lot of community to be built out of that but it's also easy or for almost all the time for like a section or an entire fandom to become very toxic i mean look at the fucking star wars fandom you know star wars and rupaul's drag race baby well and that's kind of where i was going i was kind of going towards rupaul's drag race and this whole like jeffrey bauer Bauer chapman like getting uh bullied off of twitter um yeah and but okay this is gonna this is my generalization though so i think as queer people we are very you know we a lot of us grow up kind of on the outs, you know, we, we, we feel kind of socially ostracized, we feel kind of lonely. If you didn't mm-hmm. grow up feeling that way, that's great. But I think that the way a lot of us cope with that loneliness and that feeling of ostracization is to latch on to media, be it movies, TV, books, whatever, and therefore you make fandoms. Now, of course, with something like RuPaul's Drag Race, you have really intense fandoms. And it's almost like there's so much of a personal connection to the things that you latched on to that it I think it gives people like it makes people feel like they have the right to be mean or mm. bullying in return. Now yeah. that isn't the route that Arnold takes, but his route is kind of one of those pathetic, sad, like, oh, I need to be that person to, to where it's yeah. borderline stalkery. And mm-hmm. the reason I said I might come across like an asshole is I don't want to say that, oh, this is what all queer fandoms are like. But I feel like, you know, when you see something like that drag race with Chapman and the bullying, it's like that's kind of what I associate with queer fandoms a lot, where it's just like, they're really mean and yeah. rude and kind of pathetic. Yeah, it's not surprising to me that, you know, the gays have latched on to things like Heathers and Mean Girls and Jawbreaker. And mm-hmm. I do wonder if it's sometimes because we become the bullies when we... St- it It's almost like, you know, when people embark on their coming out process... You know how we've talked in the past about how some people go through that stage where they're just loud and proud and they wear their yeah. sexuality almost like a, a visual accessory to tell people like, don't talk to me, I'm a fag. Yeah. And you're like, cool, you do you. I think sometimes that also transitions into like, it's not anti-authoritative and it's not, you know, anti-mainstream, but it's definitely that embracing of, well, you can't fucking tell me what to do. And then we kind of become mean girls at times, right? Yes. And I, uh. it, <laughs> you're welcome. Look at you go. <laughs> no, no, because, because th- this really like taps in. I mean, I don't say this a lot because again, like we, we also have a fan base that of people that I, I mean, I'm not trying to like tutor and horn here, but we have people that do look up to us and respect us, but we've also encountered people who are fans of us that I- I'll say are toxic to put it mildly. Wait, do we have our own Arnolds? Oh my god, is someone walking around with my face on <laughs> their face? <laughs> Definitely not, but like that's why this short kind of like struck a chord with me. I mean, granted, it is critiquing both the fans and the subjects of their fandom. Mm-hmm. Very well, I might add. Uh, I, I actually wish it had gone on a little bit longer or yeah. that the final reveal had been a bit... I wanted it to be almost meaner in a way, if that makes sense. Like I wanted it to really go for it if it was going to be this critical yes i do think that at the end of the day that the the, the arnold's lack of a face is saying that he has no identity because his identity is solely his fandom um which is cool i was kind of hoping it would go the gory route and be like oh he Mm -hmm. like literally has this like you know bloody covered like face and he i was kind of thinking that he was gonna rip off austin kelsey's face at the end and put it on his own (laughs) yeah i do wonder as you know we've talked in the past about the the limited budgets that accompany some shorts. And I wonder if that was just a consideration where they would have taken it further, but maybe they just didn't have the funds or the time or whatever. Cause I do think that a lot in this short 
it has a very polished feel the editing mm-hmm. the music cues are all really on point like they're very striking these are clearly guys who know exactly what they're doing and what they were trying to accomplish and i think they're really hitting that but i do agree with you that i i wanted it to take it that extra step like particularly when the body horror starts to come in when the nosebleeds yep. come in you know there's there's the suggestion that his whole face is going to start to just slide right off because obviously the plastic surgery was not well done and he is not being properly taken care of (laughs) he also didn't listen to his doctor and that was really (laughs) stupid (laughs) oh come on that doctor was a quack that looked like some kind of back market black alley i agree but he said no more than two teaspoons of that face cream a day and there he is like slathering it on his face (laughs) like a mask (laughs) no it's true (laughs) yeah i i don't know i this is another one of these shorts where i wonder I don't think that it won't play well for straight audiences because I think that the subject is fairly evident. Like, it's not beneath the surface. Yeah, it's a, it's a universal theme of, like, this kind of pop idol worship. And again, I, I think it expands beyond just pop stars. But, um, yeah, it's a, it is a biting critique. I mean, there, there is a meanness to this. But like you said, yeah, I, I kind of wish it would have gone meaner. And maybe that's because, though, we're coming at it from, like, looking at it as horror and maybe, I mean, I don't know what these two filmmakers have done in the past or if they've done anything, but um, they, it may not have been more from a horror standpoint. They may be going for something more like Heathers, you know? Yeah, more, it, this is definitely more satire than traditional horror. So I do think that we were maybe looking for something that the short was never really intending on doing. But all that to say, I was quite a big fan of imitations. And it's one of those things where... I think I would, I don't think I want to watch a full feature because I don't know that it has the comedic bite to sustain that, but I definitely would have watched like a 25 minute version of this. No, I I think you can make this a feature length film. Look at something like May, you know, Mm, you make it like May and it's more about, well, I mean, that's the thing though. Do you divide your time evenly between the Austin Kelsey character and the Arnold character? Or do you make this a funny character study of the Arnold character? I feel like you'd have to split your time because you'd have to have... Because, again, I mean, the thing with, that worked about May is, I mean, I liked May. She definitely had problems that we're aware of, but I still sympathized with May. Whereas with Arnold, I feel like he's almost so pathetic that it's... And that it sounds bad, right? Because he's, prob- he's clearly, <laughs> like, a social outcast. He's probably been bullied. And those are things that you can't really help, and they do affect how you, like, grow up. Like, how, of course, the adult yeah. that you become. But I feel like two, like 90 minutes of Arnold's would be kind of obnoxious. So you'd have to balance it out with like kind of this bitchy, silly Austin Kelsey character. Yeah. And it would be interesting to see whether Austin would therefore have more to him. Like one of my favorite moments of this short is where he has that interview with the woman on the kind of late night talk show. And she is so enraptured with all of the stupid things that he's saying, but I can't get a read on whether he believes it or if he's just like, this is my shtick. This is how I sell a million albums. Yeah, that that's a really good. Like, like you can see, like maybe if they do a feature length version of this, it's like it starts with this music video, and maybe we even have that you know talk show appearance or a version of that like halfway through the movie, and then it's like he goes to his trailer, and it's like the mask, the, the figurative mask comes off, and he's mm-hmm. like, oh thank God, like I'm normal again. And it, it, there's lots of potential here for sure. I mean, yeah, there's there yeah, th- there's a lot of material to mine, but granted there's a fine line between funny satire and just obnoxiousness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got to make sure that you're giving your audience highs and lows, but also like characters that they want to spend um, more significant time with. But even like the color palette for this, I mean, it's not on the same level as Jawbreaker, but it reminded me of something like Jawbreaker, especially in the music video where it's like, I can mm-hmm. see like a black comedy coming out of this in that vein. Yep. Yeah, love me some candy colored nightmares. <laughs> um but yeah no i mean any any lasting thoughts on imitations i think one of the things that i've really been enjoying about doing these shorts is the opportunity to identify talent and i would love to see what other things these guys have done and particularly like if they're going to be maybe venturing into feature territory very interested yeah i I agree i mean i think there's a like you said this feels very polished and it feels like there's a budget behind this so i'd love to see what they could do with a feature-length film If it's not about this, then just something else. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Uh, okay, well, uh, then I guess uh, everyone let us know what y'all thought of imitations. Did it click for you or did you find it, I don't know, Not did you not think it was effective? Just let us know on our socials and on that note, we can cross out imitations. Yes, and cross out micro queers. <laughs> Disgusting Podcast Network, home of creepy and disturbing and terrifying creepy pastas, SCP archives, weekly full cast storytelling, the poor queers, genre commentary from an LGBTQ perspective, and the Boo Crew. Horror centric interviews. Listen free wherever you stream audio and at bloodydisgusting.com slash podcasts. It was late in the afternoon when the professor and I took our way towards the east, whence I knew Jonathan was coming. Jonathan Harker has asked me to note this, as he says he is hardly equal to the task, and he wants an exact record kept. Dear Madam Mina, I have read your husband's so wonderful diary. Strange and terrible as it is, it is true. I will pledge my life on it. God preserve my sanity, for to this I am reduced. Safety and the assurance of safety are things of the past. I am in hopes that I shall see more of you at Castle Dracula. (laughs) Listen to Regarding Dracula wherever you listen to podcasts or find us online at bloody.fm.